Shall we get started, Rachel? If you want to continue to uh, let people in, I will. I can get kick started with the welcome. Give me a nod. All right. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, Greg Laduca here from Visit Rochester. Uh, going to get the meeting kicked off. Uh, just a couple of things because we are going to have um, some first time attendees and some new members on the line. Maybe you haven't been to a meeting in a while. Um, but this um, tomorrow's the anniversary of um, the last time we canceled a visitor industry council meeting. And I'm happy to say that uh, since then, April through uh, March here, uh, we've uh, had numbers over 100 at each of our virtual VIC meetings. Um, but just a reminder for everyone, the Visitor Industry Council is the working arm of the membership that is run by your uh, volunteer steering committee uh, who puts these meetings together. Um, and just a little bit about the meeting today, uh, your 2021 VIC Chair Julie izzo Nideswick is going to start out with her Seeds of Growth Spotlight with the Fairport Parrington Merchants Association. And then we're going to hear um, from national speaker Amir Ilan from Longwoods International. Um, after that, uh, you will hear committee updates from eight of our working committees um, that are working towards um, forwarding our mission at Visit Rochester. There, from there, you'll hear staff updates. You'll hear from each of us at Visit Rochester what's going on in our departments. Then you'll have an opportunity for 30 second announcements, 30 seconds or less, if you have something that you'd like to share with us and the rest of the membership, what's going on at your organization, you're welcome to put a note in the chat and Julie will invite you on when it's time. And then as always, we have a little bit of fun with networking, trivia and prizes. We have some great prizes again this month, so hopefully you'll stick around. Um, the VIC is um, our hospitality community in Rochester and the Finger Lakes. And we're here to promote and collaboration and growth for all of our members of Visit Rochester. So uh, it's an honor to be here. I, I, it is, as I always say, my favorite day of the month. Um, so without further ado, uh, Julie Izzo Nideswick, Stokey Farm and your 2021 VIC chairperson. Hello everyone, happy March. It's great to see everyone today. Um, the steering committee and I are really excited for today's meeting. Um, and I personally have to say that I'm beginning to see the light in the other tunnel. So spring is coming, things are starting to open up. Governor's willing to open up a little bit New York or New York a little bit more. And I love having national speakers. So I, I love today. Um, and actually my husband and I are actually talking the other day. He's like, I'm ready to travel. So when he's ready to travel, that means he's feeling better. And I actually went to a conference last month in Atlanta um, to a farm just outside Atlanta. Everything was outside. There were a lot of us and it was, I guess, 21 days ago now. And I just got the update that nobody got sick from it. So traveling can be done 100% safely. I truly believe that. And then one more personal note. Um, I just want to say thank you to every single person. I got a ton of texts and messages and emails from, um, the farm's last weekend's escapades when the baby kangaroo got lost in 10 a.m. Um, we're so entirely grateful for everyone that said good thoughts and prayers. And I truly believe that is why we got her back because it was really cold Saturday night into Sunday and she runs 20 miles an hour. So we're blessed and grateful and thank you for everyone that did that. Um, just a quick reminder, feel free to use the chat button at the bottom um, to post your um, events and things that you have coming up to let the membership know. We will be doing 30 second announcements um, later in the meeting, but you can put your links and um, all that good stuff, more detailed into that area. Because your member as 2021 chair, my theme for the year is Seeds of Growth, where I wanna highlight businesses or groups in the Rochester and Finger Lakes area, whose purpose um, started as a little tiny spark of an idea and grew into something much larger um, beyond the original mission, I guess. Today, we are going to highlight the Fairport Parenton Merchants Association. And I'm so pleased that Pam Renfro is on the line for us, or with us today. Pam, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Are you there, Pam? Yes, I am. There you go. Hi, how are you? Very good. How are you? Good, thanks. Can you just describe a little bit of your main responsibilities at the Merchants Association? 
Um, I am and have been since 2017 a paid admin for the Merchants Association. In 2017, they decided that um, they needed someone that could check the mail every day, uh, you know, process member payments, uh, that sort of thing. I work 10 to 15 hours a week, so it's just a nice little part-time job. Um, but that is it. That is my um, main involvement with the Merchants Association at this point. So the Merchants Association is over 40 years old, and it supports the businesses of the Village of Fairport and the town of Harrington. Who had the original idea to pull merchants together, and why was that seen important in, what, 1979? Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah, it was 1979. Um, my understanding is that it started out more or less as a sidewalk sale, um, <laughs> as a group of um, merchants that wanted to um, pool their resources and promote their businesses and like I said, a sidewalk sale sort of thing. And then it's just grown from there. So was that sidewalk sale the precursor to the Fairport Canal Days Art yes. and Food Festival? Yes, Fairport Canal Days. Yep. Yep. So now Fairport Canal Days has grown into one of the largest two-day festivals in the area and can host upward of 200,000 guests. That's yes. a huge undertaking. How is the Merchants Association supportive of that event? Actually, the Merchants Association is the producer of the event. They don't support the event. They're the producers, which is sometimes people um, think that the Village of Fairport produces canal days. Not true. It's the Merchants Association. There's a separate canal days committee that meets uh, 10 months out of the year, I believe. Um, they've So they've already been meeting um, for this year's uh, canal days event. They secure, you know, insurance. They do all of the uh, securing of all of the um, mechanics of it, the logistics of it, um, and they um, receive the applications from the applicants. Um, so it is, it is produced by the Fairport Merchants Association. I know that we were all really sad when you had to cancel the festival last year, um, but it looks like, and I'm really happy to say that you guys are moving forward this summer. Um, what can we expect different this year? How many vendors? What's 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 the what's the moving target plan for this year? Because everything's so good right now. Very, very good wording. It's a moving target. Um, right now the Canal Days Committee, um, with the help of the design committee from the Fairport Parent and um, Partnership. There's a design committee that has uh, landscape architects, uh, well, all sorts of professionals on it. They have drawn up um, layouts. Um, so there are three different versions, I believe, that they're looking at. The typical canal days, which is fully open, and then one that is a little bit smaller footprint, and then the smallest, which would be hubs, which would be very controlled, um, a very controlled footprint. So depending upon the um, federal, state, county, and local uh, restrictions at the time, that will determine what canal days will look like this year. That probably adds a lot. We of do have a good number. We do have a good number of, of, um, of vendors that have applied. Excellent. That's probably adding a lot of work to everybody's plate, but we're all excited that we're going to be able to be able to at least come and do something. So yes, yeah. thank you guys for, for adjusting. So the other thing that's going on in Fairport right now is the lift bridge is being repaired. And that is like, yes. like the main drag where everything is. I know that's been a challenging for some of your merchants. How did the Merchants Association support them? And when can we expect it to open again? We are told opening will be in April. We don't have a date yet. Um, so we're, we're, we're hanging on that. Um, well, we thought the bridge was going to be the big issue in 2020. Weren't we wrong about that? <laughs> that was our, our kind of our little tagline in Fairport as well. I guess the bridge isn't the biggest issue. Um, but what I would say about um, the bridge is uh, the mayor of Fairport, she called together and pulled together a, um, she called it the bridge core team, well in advance of the bridge closing. Um, and we're talking Chamber of Commerce, the Fairport Police um, some community members, a, a just a, a wide um, 
array of folks that got together. We got together once a week um, for several weeks in a row um, to plan and to strategize about the, um, the upcoming bridge closure. And because of that, um, and OSED, our Office of Community and Economic Development, they hired a uh, PR firm. Uh, we produced materials, brochures. Uh, we have a um, pedestrian um, walk uh, route that they determined through the Fairport. They um, uh, have stencils made of gears and they painted those stencils on the sidewalk along the pedestrian route just to kind of make it fun. Um, in addition to showing people how they could get from one side of the canal to the other. Um, and so I would say it was, it was this, the strategizing up front, the cooperation of all the different groups together that then made the bridge just not, a, yes, it was a big deal, but it was not, um, it was not as disruptive as it could have been had we not planned for it. That's awesome that everyone worked so well together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Having been there, I agree. It, it was well done, easy to, to maneuver. And you guys did a great job. Um, so but the other thing that's going on at Fairport, and the reason it was so important is because you guys have a ton of exciting things going on in the past few years. We were at Iron Smoke Whiskey a few years ago, but I know that you're getting new members all the time. Who are some of like the highlighted must-see members that we all should know about? Well, um, I did take that question and I kind of organized it. We're kind of thinking in Fairport right now in like tours, organizing our members into, okay, so you want to do a craft beverages tour. You know, we've got Castle Larga, we've got Fairport Brewing Company, Faircraft Brauhaus, which is new um, German style, uh, Trip Hammer Beer Works, and then Iron Smoke that you, so that's our craft beverage. We have 17 restaurants, pizzerias, ice cream. So you could do a restaurant eating eatery tour. We have a canal, um, a, a canal trail and train tour um, that I put together. That's uh, Colonial Bell, um, the Fairport Junction train viewing platform. We have a brand new train viewing platform that has really increased our traffic. I had no idea that there were so many rail fans out there. Um, I am getting an education on um, just the rail fan population. It's been, it's been very educational. Um, and then we have Crescent Trail Association. And then I have the Resale for a Cause tour. And that's, um, we have three local shops that are open for business. They um, receive all of their goods that they sell from donations. That's Craft Bits and Pieces. So that's just what their name says, Craft bits and pieces. They are a um, resale for the senior options for independence, independence. We have the tool thrift shop, which is tools um, of all sizes, I should say. Um, and that's for senior options for independence. And then our third uh, resale for a cause uh, shop is Sweet Charity. And that's for Advent House. They're a comfort care home, which is an alternative care for uh, terminally ill folks. So yeah, there's lots, lots to see and lots to do, but that kind of arranges everybody into, uh, into segments. Then we have a museum, we have a very vibrant library, all kinds of retail shops. So come and visit. I feel like we should like get a hotel room for the weekend at Woodcliffe and just like do a Fairport, like, like staycation, but at Woodcliffe. <laughs> Funny you should bring that up. We did, um, working with Tammy um, Point and Grimes, who's also on this call, um, we did put together for the um, New York Power Authority and the and Canal New York, I believe, um, put out a call for um, um, a grant, a staycation grant program. And we did, working with a local hotel, um, some of our, our craft uh, beverage, um, the Colonial Bell tour boat, and um, the town of Parenton trails, um, we did put together a staycation package that we submitted for a grant. Haven't heard yet, we have been awarded, but. Fingers crossed. Yes. Before we wrap up, any quick future plan for the Merchants Association? Um, just to keep, you know, to continue to promote Fairport as a great place to live, work, play, and visit. 
Um, we're constantly looking for new ways to um, market our merchant member businesses. We have home, home businesses, we have service businesses, then we have retail and of course restaurant. Um, and then just looking for ways to support the Fairport uh, parenting community. We do um, donate to our local food shelf, um, Mercy Flight. We have a um, dollars for scholarship, dollars for scholars scholarship that we award each year um, from um, our funds. Um, so just, you know, kind of a, I would say a three, three prong approach. Well, thank you, Pam. I want to wish you the very best of luck in um, your upcoming events. And it sounds like you guys are so busy and so supportive. Kudos to everyone at the Merchants Association. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm missing the rest of the meeting, but we'll have my video off. Okay. Everyone go visit, go visit Fairport because there's so much going on, obviously, that probably I didn't even realize how much was going on. So that's excellent. Now I'm going to bring on Jessica Conley, your 2021 vice chair, and she's going to welcome some new members. You're muted, Jess. I knew that. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to organize them because I've had a few pop through. Um, but first time attendees and new members. So for our new members, we um, are very pleased and honored to welcome the National Women's Hall of Fame, considering um, what month we are in. And attending for um, that organization is Olivia Takex. Sorry if I say that wrong. And Natalie Rudd. Um, and um, we have Constellation Brands with Alicia Nestle attending. Um, and let's see, let me check the chat here quick. We have, as far as um, first time attendees, we have Natalia Terragino, sorry if I'm saying these names wrong, by the way, uh, with Blue Heron Hills Golf Club. And there is a congratulations attached to that, to the recent purchase of the golf club. So congratulations, Natalia. Um, and then we have Stephanie uh, Specchio uh, with Watkins Glen Chamber, uh, who works with our very own Michael Hardy. And then we have guests, um, Jonathan Kesslow with Conservant Media, David Gascon with 20 Deep Winery, which opens in about a year. And I had one more guest with Christine or Christina with Sense by Design. So thank you all for taking the time to um, join us. And we look forward to getting to know all of you a little bit more over the coming years. Thank you, Jess. And thanks, welcome everyone. This is an amazing group, but everyone's so very helpful and supportive. So, you know, lean on our, our fellow members. Next, we are rolling right into the main event, so to speak. Myself and the steering committee are very pleased to welcome Amir Elon from Longwood International. Amir is very active on the national speaking and consulting circuit and is a 32 veteran of the travel and tourism industry. He's joining us today to provide an update on the latest research on when the market will return and how travelers are feeling. Amir, welcome, how are you? Well, hello everyone. Uh, I need someone just to enable my uh, share of the screen. Oh. I think I got it now here. Oh, let's try it again. There we go. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I wish I was uh, many years ago. I used to be uh, in the Finger Links, my old stomping grounds, and I spent a few years in Corning. And uh, so I got to know Rochester pretty well. Uh, now I'm in Columbus, Ohio, but uh, wish I could be back there because uh, you know, Finger Lakes in the spring is always a beautiful place. So, uh, but let's kind of get down to business and let's uh, share some good news. I was encouraged to hear all the optimism in everybody's voices and uh, uh, talking about things picking up here before this call. And uh, so let's let's add to that good news with a little bit of uh, uh, clearing forecast. Uh, people used to call me last year during the pandemic and say, Amir, what's the outlook? What's the outlook? And he kept, kept using the term, the crystal ball is cloudy. 
So, uh, well, now I'm happy to say that the, uh, the, the, the crystal ball is starting to clear up a little bit. The cloudy forecast is clearing. So uh, let's, let's share a little bit of uh, what we've learned here recently. Um, we're talking about something called travel sentiment. Uh, and uh, I'm going to share you some highlights from our latest travel sentiment research. Uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we've been doing a, a travel sentiment tracker. We'll talk about that momentarily. And then I'm going to segue into last few minutes talking about, based on what we've learned, what we're seeing, um, some trends you can expect uh, for to the rest of 21 and uh, possibly beyond. Uh, and then we'll leave a few minutes at the end here if you have any questions. So uh, I, I, I can't read the chat box while I'm talking, but uh, I will uh, at the very end, if you pop some questions in there or just raise your hand and talk, we'll, or, or when, when we get back, we'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So uh, real quickly, uh, before you get your cell phone cameras out and start taking pictures of screens like crazy, uh, see it happen every time. And I, even though I'm gonna say it, some of you are gonna do it, that's fine, no worries. Um, I'm gonna move quickly through some data here. Um, but this deck is going to be made available to you uh, after the presentation, and I'll also give you my email address and the uh, website you can go to afterwards if you want to find out more or see some more things on there. So don't worry, just sit back, relax, and uh, hopefully I'll be a little entertaining for the next uh, 25 minutes or so here. So here we go. All right. So uh, along with International, real quickly, if you're not familiar with us, we are a market research consultancy. We specialize in the travel and tourism industry. Uh, we are about to celebrate our 43rd birthday and uh, our, our, uh, our, we were founded in Toronto, Ontario. Our, head, our global headquarters is now in Columbus, Ohio. We still have that Toronto office and offices in about uh, five other places across the US. Uh, but we've been specializing in travel and tourism since 1985. We currently work with well over 150 destinations, uh, travel and tourism brands and uh, attractions, lodging companies, et cetera. So, uh, so we're very proud of our, our, of our clients and, uh, and it's an honor for us to serve this great industry here. So let's talk about how we got the travel sentiment. Uh, literally just almost a year ago on March 1st, 2020, uh, we happened to gather everybody in our Columbus headqu Ohio headquarters uh, for our annual strategic planning retreat. We always meet at the end of February, beginning of March, and we kind of plot out the next 12 to 18 months as a company. Well, I was coming back uh, from a speaking engagement in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, and as I got off the stage from my presentation, get ready to head it back out to the airport, I just got, got the text from the local news alert saying that community spread of coronavirus has been confirmed. So I immediately, when I got to the airport, I called the office and said, we need to rework the agenda for the first day of our retreat. And we're gonna just talk about this thing called COVID and think, figure out what we need to do about it or what we can do about it for the industry. So we gathered on March 1st, we all sat there around the conference room table and we took a look at things and we knew this was gonna be a disruptor. We had no idea how big a disruptor this was gonna be. And, uh, and, and, and we said, you know, well, what, what could be most helpful for the industry through this? So we decided that, uh, you know, a little bit of a guidepost looking forward. You know, one of the things we do on a regular basis is we have something called Travel USA. Now Travel USA is the largest and longest running ongoing study of traveling US households. Every year we document somewhere between 300 and 350,000 trips taken by Americans. So we learn everything about how Americans travel, where they're, where they're traveling, how they plan their trips, all kinds of things about their travel habits. Um, but that's always talking about trips they've just taken. So we wanted to look forward and look at travel sentiment and how they feel about travel and what they might be thinking about planning travel uh, in light of this pandemic. So th thus was born uh, our wonderful travel sentiment study. Uh, of, of Americans. So I'm going to share with you some highlights we just released last week. We do this, we, we initially launched it, it was a weekly study, and then uh, about three months into it, we realized that um, the data wasn't very volatile from week over week, so we would just uh, started doing it on, on a bi-weekly basis. So uh, this is the latest, Wave 32 came out last Tuesday, we'll have Wave 33 coming out this next Tuesday. Um, we go into the field every other Wednesday and Thursday, and we talk to a thousand a sample of a thousand traveling Americans ages 18 years and older, representative sample of the US, uh, uh, weighted wait uh, uh, um, according to census regions, uh, demographics, et cetera, uh, there. So we have a, a true mix and we pull them out of our Travel USA panel and we talk to these folks and ask them a few short, short questions about their sentiment towards travel. So 
The cool thing about doing this for a whole year is I've got trend lines. I can, you can see the little roller coaster of how our industry has been here. So one of the very first questions we ask is, do you have plans to travel in the next six months? And you can see back on March 11th, all the way in the left here, March 11th of 2020, 87%, 87% of American travelers said they had plans to travel in the next six months. And you can see that actually stayed relatively high. Obviously it, it dropped uh, uh, as the pandemic, as the country kind of shut down, but it never really, just a couple times in late fall and right before Christmas, it dipped below two thirds of all Americans. So there was always this pent up demand to travel amongst American travelers. But the great thing that we've seen, you know, even though it was hovering, hovering through most of the pandemic in the uh, low 70s or upper 60s, we've seen the spike since late January. Uh, the last three waves in a row here, you can see have all been above 80%. Uh, and that's a direct correlation with the vaccinations that are happening here. Uh, you know, and, and, and the vaccinations, loosening of restrictions and so forth. So the pent up demand is about to release and it's actually starting to release. And we'll talk about that here. So we asked folks uh, every other way, you know, where's your next trip uh, in there? And you can see there's about almost one in five, one in six don't have any trips currently planned. Uh, but those who are saying they have trips planned in the next six months, here's where it is. So you got about 16% uh, pretty much going on spring break. You got uh, you know a few late spring, maybe some Easter travel, et cetera. Uh, there, but it's that three to five month window and six month window. Uh, that's really um, where the majority of travel. So we're looking at summer travel, folks, because people are going, hmm, I'm going to get vaccinated and then I'm going to go travel. Uh, and, here, and that's how it's playing out. Uh, again, you can see we've asked this question uh, a month earlier, back in early February, and you can see there's been a couple slight changes. So uh, the, within the next month, you see the booking window, uh, more spontaneous travel. Guess what? There's a lot of folks, uh, especially in the more senior demographics, uh, that are, have money, can travel, and they've just been vaccinated. So they want to take a trip. They're free, free to go um, there. And you see a little bit of a decline in those with the six month or longer pl travel planning because it looks like everybody's been booking summer travel. Uh, very uh, beginning of the year, we asked folks, what's that first tra trip you're going to take in 2021 when you do travel? Uh, and you can see that overwhelmingly visiting friends and relatives is first, right? We've missed birthdays and holidays and graduations and all kinds of milestones, reunions, whatever. And we want to reconnect with our friends and loved ones. That's what we want to do. And you can see there too, that the road trip is going to dominate. It's basically uh, traveling by car first before uh, you're going to hop on a plane uh, in there. And then after visiting friends and relatives is that traditional leisure get vacation or getaway. Um, in there. But again, it's going to be the year of the road trip this year. While air travel is starting to pick back up, uh, it's the 2021 will definitely be the year of the road trip. We'll talk more about that momentarily. Um, and we're asking folks, okay, so on your next leisure trip, if you're going to take that leisure trip, what are the activities that you're planning to do? Uh, well, again, 45% said they're going to visit friends and family. No surprise there. That's been very strong throughout the pandemic. And then the rest of things, you know, uh, be, you know, beaches, waterfronts, uh, uh, especially going down south, southeast, uh, Florida beaches, uh, southeast coast, and so forth. We're going to see we're seeing a lot of that happening. And taking the road trip, of course, so over one third are going to be taking the road trip. And then you can see the rest of the, kind of the activities are very much outdoor based, uh, visiting national state parks, etc., or um, cultural types of activities uh, and so forth. But the interesting thing I wanna point out as Rochester is an urban area, urban areas, when we've asked this question throughout the pandemic, um, we've always seen less than 10% kind of responding and exploring a city. Now it's jumped up to 23% the last time we asked this, uh, just a couple of weeks back. So, um, so that interest in returning to the city is growing as people are starting to get vaccinated uh, there. So you will see a rebound from leisure travel into our urban areas, probably by midsummer. So. We're encouraged by that. What you can see on the bottom end of the spectrum here is attending festivals and events or uh, live sports and amateur sports and so forth. Uh, you know, yeah, some of that's starting to come online now, as we know from recent announcements, but uh, folks are still kind of, you know, they're still pretty leery of uh, any of those types of events in there. Every wave of the survey from the very beginning, we've asked about three key factors that would greatly impact the decision to travel in the next six months. Obviously, fear of coronavirus, that 35% is the, uh, uh, you know, 500 pound gorilla in the room. Uh, but uh, we've also asked about concerns about one's finances and transportation costs. And both of those have remained very negligible. Well, let's talk about that fear of coronavirus. Okay, 35% say it's gonna greatly impact their decision to travel in the next six months. 
Well, let's go back to March 11th, a year ago here. So that's the same exact number, 35%. In there, and because on March 11th, our country right before the country shut down, everyone said, "Ah, eh, you know, it's not going to be that big a deal." <laughs> they were wrong. And you saw it, we kind of skyrocketed, and then we kind of made this little roller coaster ride back. Uh, but obviously, it's decreased precipitously since back before Christmas, when the CDC said, "Absolutely, do not travel." We've gone from 52 percent down to 35 percent in just a couple months. So that's been very um, in encouraging here, and we we think that's obviously going to continue to drop once we uh, as, as we get more vaccines out there. Concerns about personal financial situation here. I'm just going to show you the most couple waves here. You can see, as I've told you, it's been remained relatively low. But throughout the beginning of the pandemic, it's never really cost across 25%. It's always been in the 18 to 20 percent range for the most most, most of this, which tells us one thing, folks. This is not an economic crisis first. It's a health crisis first. And we have to remember that. But unfortunately, some of the ways we're marketing, uh, we're acting as if it's been an economic uh, crisis first and foremost. Yes, it's had a horrible economic impact on our industry, but in the minds of the consumer, this is a health crisis first, and travelers tend to have a little bit more money than the average consumer. So um, for them, it's not a question of, can I afford to travel? It's a question of, when am I going to travel? No. And then uh, we, we ask, uh, you know, are you, are, you planning to, are you planning to change your upcoming travel plans due to the coronavirus? Uh, you can see we're down to 61%, which is as low as we've been since the very first week of the survey. So it's heading in the right direction, which is great. How are folks changing their travel plans? Well, about one third are reducing the number of trips they're taking. We've seen longer trips and less frequency happening through the pandemic. Uh, definitely, this has been very consistent throughout the whole pandemic. Uh, on a regular basis, we've asked this question, one third choosing destinations they can drive to, drive markets versus flying markets, which works well for destinations like Rochester, where you're primarily a regional drive market. So, um, so this will be your year when it comes into recovery, you'll recover faster than long haul markets. Um, and then you're also seeing a lot of folks using Somebody needs to mute their phone there. Um, but but, uh, but a lot of, see a lot of people you know, choosing to travel domestically instead of internationally. And there's an opportunity. A lot of Americans not going to be planning to go abroad this year because they're not sure when they'll be able to. So there's a great opportunity for you to capture some of that market share by introducing them to what you have in, that, in, 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 in the reason. Um, and then look at a little insight on the right here. 20%, one in five are now saying that it's not influencing their travel plans at all. So then that number has been steadily growing. We also talk to these travelers as residents in their own community. And you can see that we're very much a divided country on opening up our community to visitors, feeling safe traveling outside our community, feeling safe dining and shopping locally. Let's explore that a little just here for a quick minute. So remember I told you, I showed you 84% of American travelers have plans to travel in the next six months, but only 44% feel good about welcoming visitors back into their community. So think about that. We have to make sure that we're engaging with our locals and showing them that we're welcoming visitors, but we are asking them to be safe and that we're gonna cre create a safe environment for everybody to interact with in our destinations. Uh, and that's gonna be so, so important. Uh, only, but again, 84% have plans to travel, but only 50% currently feel safe traveling outside their community, which means there's a certain level of risk they're willing to accept and they're going to take that risk uh, there. And that risk is a personal thing. It varies from degree to degree uh, on, on the individual. And uh, as you can see, uh, almost 50%, we're just waiting to cross that threshold again here, feel safe shopping and dining locally. Um, and as we know, those are the baby steps. Those are the baby steps to get people moving again. So we monitor this very, very carefully here. Uh, of course, the vaccine, I get asked all the time, well, how's the vaccine imp imp impacting travel? As you can see, uh, we ask this on a regular basis now, and about 36% of Americans travelers tell us that they're going to wait to travel until they receive the vaccine. That number has been going down, which is nice, uh, as well, of course, more people get vaccinated uh, there. But that little inset on the right, 32% say that the vaccine has no impact on our travel plans. So there is there's the bold, the mighty, and the risk takers, and they're going to go regardless. Well, the one thing we learned this past year is that most people can work from just about anywhere. Uh, and they chose to get away and work and work, or take or send their, their kids were studying remotely and they had to work from home. Why not 
instead of that one week on the beach house, let's take three weeks and uh, do it from there. And as you can see, we asked the question recently in the last 12 months, 33% uh, of traveling Americans said they have worked remotely while on a vacation of some sort in the past year. All right, that's where the lay of the land is in terms of sentiment. Let's take the last few minutes we have here together and talk about what's, what we see is gonna happen, what's happening now and looking ahead, what to expect for 2021. There's a quick summary of these things. And, and so, you know, when we talk about looking at things and predicting trends and forecasts, we don't just look at one source of data and we don't just look at travel sentiment. So this is now we have overlaid what we've learned from travel sentiment with what's actually been happening because we've still been running Travel USA. Uh, so we know what's been happening through the first, uh, through 2020. Uh, and guess what? Travelers, what they said they were gonna do in terms of sentiment, they actually did. Um, so they weren't lying to us. They really, they really did follow through on these things. So we learned a lot of things and I think here's some things you're gonna expect. Larger party sizes, we saw this happening. Uh, mom and dad weren't getting away. If they got away, they took the kids and everyone with them. And now so you're gonna see larger party sizes in, in, in your average trip party. Uh, you're gonna see uh, a lot more multi-generational type of travel, extended family type of things. You're gonna see that uh, continuing in through at least through the summer. You're gonna see an increase in trip length. Uh, people have been cooped up. They haven't used all their vacation days. Uh, they wanna go uh, and, and, and it's really important, but don't ignore there'll be short getaways because as soon as people are getting vaccinated, they are gonna start taking these little spontaneous weekend getaways too uh, there. And which again, works so well for you guys in Rochester. I think what, you're in a day's drive or what about 40% of the US population. So uh, that, 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 that bodes really well for uh, the Finger Lakes region in general. Um, the planning and booking cycle. Uh, you're going to see the long ones and short ones, as I showed you there. Uh, you know, for, for, for specific destinations, a lot of people uh, are going to go do bucket list travel. There's a term that's coming out now called revenge travel. Uh, you know, people are going to say, you know, I don't know when the next thing's going to come. It's going to shut me down or keep me from traveling for a period of time. So they're researching now and they're planning for that, you know, trip to climb Mount Kilimanjaro or hike the Grand Canyon or whatever it is was on their bucket list. They're going to go do it. Uh, so you see that. But a lot, a much greater increase in spontaneity, especially if people get vaccinated. They have the time, they have the money, they're going to go. So, so, so be prepared to hit people up on Wednesday for ideas of what to do on Friday. Um, and you just might get them, especially in your close in regional drive markets. In there. Look, the great outdoors are still going to be very, very popular. Uh, there. This is still going to be a great year. The great outdoors was a growing trend anyway, pre-pandemic. Uh, people want to reconnect with nature. They want to be, you know, we're still a little bit gun shy about being around big crowds. Uh, so we're still going to seek those outdoor destinations, especially if you're sitting at home for a whole year. Uh, but that urban interest that I showed you with some of the data there, it's, it's, it's on the upswing and it, we do predict it's going to revive uh, mid-year quite nicely when it comes to leisure travel. And then, Road trips continue to dominate. You know, my good family, the Gri friends, the Griswolds, they're going to hit the road uh, with the family truckster. Uh, and that, again, that was another trend that was growing uh, before the pandemic. And we're just going to see that uh, continue to accelerate this year. Okay. Keep in mind, folks, recovery is going to be a progression. You know, so you're going to have to adjust your marketing plans. And you're going to have to be kind of staged marketing plans. You're going to have to have kind of the, the, you know, right now you're focusing on day trips and hopefully starting to look at regional overnight uh, getaways, you know, uh, from, from, from your re regional drive markets, especially in state uh, there, then you're going to have as restrictions get eased and, and, you know, and, and so forth. And I know in New York, you guys had some more restrictive quarantine restrictions, and it sounds like those are starting to be lifted. Um, you know, then you look at the longer haul markets. And then hopefully by some point late summer and third quarter, the business travel starts coming back. That's going to be a little slower because companies aren't going to send their people on the road until the liability is uh, uh, significantly lowered. Um, then, you know, again, third quarter, hopefully larger meetings and conventions will be able to happen again and international, if we're lucky by the fourth quarter, uh, we should be seeing some of that coming back in there, but it's not looking that, that great yet. Uh, um, obviously issues of vaccine shortages and other things like that, uh, uh, for international markets. I just look to our neighbors from the North and Canada, uh, that are nowhere near where we are in terms of, uh, vaccination. So, um, yeah. Day trippers, uh, often an overlooked market. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, we deliver a lot of uh, visitor studies and we, we deliver both day trip and overnight information and our destination clients always would gobble up the overnight information. When we try to present the day trip, they're like, yeah, it's nice, but 
The real money is with the day trip or overnighters because the overnighters spend more. Well, yes, but these day trippers will become your overnighters and they are going to be, uh, they were part of, you know, for the, for the little bit of visitation you were getting last year, they were your bread and butter. They're going to continue to be very, very important over the next year. Plus they're going to be the advocates that it is safe to get to travel. And you all know if you're marketing, show them a little bit of reason just to do a little bit more and you'll convert them into overnighters in there. Some trends, some things that the, that, that the travelers have been conditioned to now. The travelers are now equating cleanliness with safety. There used to be a delineation between cleanliness and safety. Now it's now the lines are blurred um, in there. Uh, that's why things like what Hilton did and other ma major lodging brands did, aligning themselves with known brands like Lysol or the Mayo Clinic and with healthcare systems and things like that, really important to building traveler confidence. And that's going to be uh, still very, very important uh, that, 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 that we still uh, market our cleanliness and, and travelers are going to be looking for that, for not just this year, but for the next few years moving forward, I predict. Uh, these new protocols, there's new expectations. Uh, don't rush if you're in the lodging sector. Don't rush to pull those stickers off the doors. Uh, there, that, that that sends a little, you know, a, 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 a sends a little bit of extra confidence that somebody took an extra minute to make sure my room was clean the way it should be. Uh, there, um, you know, you know uh, keyless contact uh, entry, things like that. Uh, you know, contactless uh, protocols that you can do in, in transacting business day to day. Don't rush to roll those things back. The, the consumer is now being conditioned to them and they're gonna have certain expectations of that. Promotions versus discounts. Okay, remember earlier I showed you the data that showed you it was not a, it was a health, it was a, it, this is a health issue first and an economic crisis second in there. And I know a lot of folks had to give away rate or felt they had to give away rate just to try to drive some incremental business. Well, you know what happens when you drop your rate significantly, you can't jack it right back up overnight. It takes a long time to get it back in there. So for those of you, yes, the consumers are looking for deals or looking for travel deals because they know they can, act, they can find some deals now, but um, focus on promotions, added value, not discounts. Uh, there, you can't discount our way into a recovery. It's just not going to work. The consumer has also been conditioned now to expect flexibility. You know, all those cancellation fees, those 48 hour cancellation notices on lodging or, or change fees and penalties for changing your flights and things like that. Well, what did the airlines and the hotels do this past year? They dropped all that and the consumer liked it. And those who are traveling love that flexibility and it's been good for them. Well, I'm already seeing signs that some folks are starting to roll that back. Don't do that. Guess what? Those who actually keep the flexibility, I know it's not going to be able, they're not going to be able to sustain uh, for the long-term total flexibility like you saw now or recently, but some level of flexibility, those, those brands that keep flexibility into their, in, into their programs with their, with their customers are going to be rewarded with loyalty from those customers moving forward. Expectation of clarity. There's an expectation of clarity among travelers. Uh, look, we know that when you go from state to state, and sometimes from county to county, there are differences in what the protocols are, the requirements. Do I have to quarantine if I go to New York or, or to Ohio or to Michigan or whatever um, in there? And, 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 and do I have to wear masks or don't I wear masks or what happened? You know, and again, um, Many of you did a great job putting up on your websites and, 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 and putting those you know, protocols and expectations about your business, about your community and so forth on there. Don't roll that back. Because guess what? Tra our data shows that we ask it every, few, every couple months and the data comes back consistently. Travelers continue to be confused and frustrated by the lack of clarity on the destinations that they want to go to. And well, guess what? When they get confused and frustrated, they hesitate and they don't book in there. And they've lost confidence in a lot of official sources because we saw all the political squabbles that happened over the past year on things. So you, the destination, the destinations, the attractions, the accommodations and so forth, you're the ones they wanna do business with, be a trusted authority for them um, in there and, and, and provide clear, concise information on what they need to do to come see you. And then there's the expectation of locals. Remember I showed you that 84% of travelers uh, Plan to travel in the next six months, but only 44% of the locals want them back in. Make sure you're having good communication and engagement with your locals and showing them that you're, you're holding these visitors to the same expectations and you're asking them to travel responsibly when they come to see you. And that you're, you're 
and that you're self-policing that that, 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 that if you see a you know, visitor behaving badly, you're addressing that. A uh, couple more quick thoughts here as I wrap up. Keep your eye on the data. I told you triangulate. Don't just look at one source of data. Look at everything that's out there and around there to kind of look at the trends and see what's happening uh, in there. But the easiest way to do this is just talking to your partners and stakeholders. And kudos to you, the Visitor Industry Council, and that you're meeting regularly, you're talking, you're sharing what's happening out there in your backyard. And that's the best way to get that intel on a local level, of course, uh, there. And the second thing is advocate. Um, we all know the bottom hit in 2020. We now know where the bottom is, right? Or God forbid, it never, it never gets worse than that um, in there. But take, take that crisis and turn it into opportunity. Advocate, use that and show, you know, your, your, your community's lost revenue, you lost jobs, uh, lost a lot of economic impact. Make sure we're telling that story right now and, and that this industry doesn't get forgotten moving forward. Good news is there's a little big bright light at the end of this long tunnel and it's not a freight train coming towards us. We're gonna come back, we're gonna come back stronger than ever. That pent up demand and leisure travel is already starting to release um, and, and it's gonna be a very good second half of the year for leisure travel. Uh, and then the other cycles, or the other segments are gonna start cycling back in and uh, it'll take a few years, but we will definitely get back uh, there. Now, to find out a little bit more, uh, if you want to find out these uh, bi-weekly updates, go to longwoodsinternational.com slash COVID-19. You'll see, uh, you'll see the, the recent data I shared with you in the pre previous studies as well. I also want to thank our partners at Miles who stepped up right away with some sponsorship because it costs money to field this every couple of weeks, and they help uh, sponsor this for us. Uh, to make it uh, this data available free for the entire travel and tourism industry. So kudos to them. They've got a great resource um, as well. And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, there's my contact information. Uh, you, can find, you can reach me directly uh, and, and where to find more about Longwoods as well. And now I'll turn it over to you if you have any questions. Yeah, there are a few questions. Um, the first one is the same people surveyed each time or is it a different group? Yep. No. So uh, we so so we pull from our Travel USA panel, which has well over two million households across the U.S. We do not survey the same people uh, every two weeks. Uh, actually, we have a rule uh, to keep our panel fresh. Uh, once you have been uh, surveyed once, uh, you're kicked out from surveys for one year and one day uh, in there. So so uh, so uh, actually, now that we've done this for one year. We may be talking to a couple of the same people, but we haven't talked to them in a year. So, so it keeps it fresh and keeps any biases uh, out, out of the uh, out of the poll. Awesome. And how do you define a trip? Is there like a, a certain mile radius that you decide that, that is a trip? Yeah. So typically for our Travel USA survey, we, we define it as any activity outside of your daily routine, because as you all know, living there in Rochester, there's some destinations less than 50 miles away that people get away to. Uh, and, and you're not going to say that's not tourism if they're getting away for a, for a weekend in there. I, uh, I live near a really beautiful resort area called the Hocking Hills. It's only 35 minutes from my home, but, uh, but, but, uh, but people go to their vacation all the time from Columbus. Um, but for this purpose, for this purpose of this survey, we did use a 50 mile delineator uh, just to get just to see people go, are, are going out and about. And last question is, Wendy, what are your thoughts of like when conferences return? Are you thinking third quarter? Well, uh, you know, again, it depends on the part of the country you're in, right? Uh, you know, I was just uh, I was just in Florida for uh, for a board meeting uh, last week, and they've eased up uh, their meetings and uh, conventions. The Orlando Convention Center is already hosting some larger groups. Um, in there, uh, you know, those things are happening. Uh, Texas just released just, just uh, released full restrictions. Their Dallas Convention Center can go back into full swing. Uh, things like that. I'm here in Ohio. We're still restricted to groups 300 or less. Um, in there, I'm not sure what your restriction currently is in New York, but I think I'm, I'm sure it's more restricted than what we have here in Ohio. So, so um, you know, it, it, it's going to depend. I, I think the rate of the vaccination is going to is going to determine that. Uh, at each state or each region. But I think, as I showed earlier, by third quarter uh, this year, by this fall, uh, it'll probably be a safe bet that a good number of larger meetings and conventions can start happening again. And from what I'm seeing anecdotally around the country, that's kind of where the bookings are right now with meeting planners, the larger ones. They're kind of holding, they're holding steady still in their third quarter events and, and uh, gambling that those will, that those will uh, be the ones that, uh, that can happen. That's awesome. And guys, everyone just remember, I know people are um, wanting to go back and look at the slides. Um, Rachel will make those available sometime at the end of this week, I believe. Rachel, you can correct me if I'm wrong. 
Um, they will actually be included in the next member newsletter, which will be sent out next week. So there's, I know you all read it word for word anyway, but here's an added incentive to check it out next week. <laughs> and I just put in the chat box a link to the travel sentiment data slides that I just shared with you. Those highlights, there's a link right there to our website uh, where you can download the latest wave updates there. So if you, if you, if you can't wait a few days, you'll, you'll see it right there. Or just shoot me an email and I'll send you the deck I, I sent you there if you can't wait. So. And if you wanted, if one of our members wanted to book with you, best way to send you an email or get in touch with you through Longwood. Uh, I'm sorry. If, 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 remember, if one of our members wanted to book you for their employer sure. or for their trade group. Oh, okay. For a presentation, sure. Here, uh, I just put I just put my email in the chat box right there, so you can uh, you can uh, reach out directly. That's fine. You have made me feel I feel very inspired now. So thank you so much. That <laughs> oh, was great. awesome. No, I just feel like good. Like, <laughs> I just well, like you well, know, you're, you make some excellent points, and I love seeing those surveys going in the right direction. And I think you're right. I think people are just waiting to travel. So they are. The, the pent up demand is there. Um, you know, we still have caution because again, our locals still aren't happy. People are still leery. Um, you know, there's there's some concern that there might be this fourth wave, this fourth surge because of the spring break travel that's happening now with all these people from around the country that went down south and are going to be coming back home up north uh, shortly. So, so we have to be wary of that. But the pace of vaccinations is accelerating to the point where I think we're going to be pretty good here. Um, there, thankfully, we have. Uh, uh, thankfully, the good news is looking good. Uh, if you would have had me presenting to you three months ago, I would have sounded like Dr. Doom. So it's all smiles and unicorns now. <laughs> and I think we're just uniquely, you're absolutely right, we're uniquely poised. We have, you know, urban, we have food, we have beer, wine, and spirits in our area. We have amazing parks. We yep. have things to do. And we are so easy to get through on Interstate 90. So you are very well positioned for recovery for leisure, for sure. Thank you so much. This was awesome. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care, everyone. Thank you. So that was awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, as we move on, just two reminders. If you'd like to do 30 second announcements, make sure you put it in the chat. I am monitoring that and I will call on you to present on that event in just a bit. Make sure you're putting more details and any links that you need in there. Also, after that, stick around for trivia with prizes as how we've been traditionally ending our Zoom meetings. Great prizes today include Arbor Hill gift certificate, a Ganondagon membership, Bill Gray gift card, and passes to Stokey Farms. Next, we're gonna move on to committee updates. I'm gonna invite committee chairs to give a quick update about what their committees are up to. Just a reminder be, be, to be brief and post any links and additional information um, for your next meeting in the chat. So we're gonna start with um, New York State Association Task Force with Tracy Pesta. Tracy. Is she on the line? We will skip that. Is Amanda Fox on the line? I am, thanks, Julie. Um, so I just quickly wanted to mention everyone for the IDEA Committee. Um, we did kick off with a great brainstorm session two weeks ago, and we will be hosting our first training come May. Um, so our next committee meeting will be in April at some point, but don't miss out on the trainings coming in May. So please um, sign up on the Visit Rochester website if you wanna be included in those. Thanks. Thank you. Next, um, John Tassone, I know you are on the line. Go ahead with the Event Enhancement Committee. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yes, the Event Enhancement Committee, uh, we're continuing to focus on recovery ideas and best practices for reopening events, venues, and facilities. Uh, we had our last meeting on March 4th and we reviewed the latest guidelines and regulations from the state with a great presentation from Kevin Dugan of the New York State Restaurant Authority. Um, as, as restrictions continue to loosen and new guidance has been coming out frequently, we're very excited to continue to meet and interact uh, as we navigate our way back to, to normal as quickly and as safely as we can. We should have our April meeting scheduled soon and I'll uh, make sure we, we post that information on the on the VAC uh, the Facebook member forum. Thanks. Thank you. Um, tour and travel with Emily Foe. Hi everyone this is Emily with the RIT in and conference center chair of the tour travel committee. Our committee has been working on brainstorming some ideas to virtually engage with tour operators as we know that we won't be able to uh, visit them in offices like we traditionally do anytime in the near future. Um, and while that's the case, we still want to make sure that we are engaging with them and maintaining relationships that we have built. 
Um, we're also working on creating ways to incentivize them to book group business with us here in Rochester once they're ready to hit the road again. Um, so those will be the points of conversation at our next meeting, which is scheduled for Wednesday, February 7th at 3 p.m. If you're interested in learning more about what we do on this committee, or if you think you could benefit from group tour business, we'd love to have you. Um, and when it gets a little bit closer, we'll post that Zoom link in the Facebook forum. Thank you. And member engagement with um, Jess Dakotas. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody that came to Bingo on March 11th. We had so much fun. And I had the pleasure of being the host um, for the first game. And um, it was such a supportive, incredible experience. And I would love, um, all of us would love, if you guys want to um, host a game, donate to a game, um, attend a game, please let us know. Um, we had 22 people uh, participate. We had great weather that day, so I know what we were competing against. Um, but we had some fantastic prizes. They were donated by um, Deer Run, Rohrbach, uh, Iron Smoke. Um, I put in my my normal basket for people when they close on a house, so um, people got some nice Watson's chocolates in there. Um, the Little as well, they also donated. Thank you so much. Um, again, if you wanna participate in any way, we would love that. Um, and then to be part of our committee, um, we are meeting this Thursday at 3 p.m. We would love to have you. We're gonna be recapping the game and then planning our next game, which is going to be April 22nd. So um, yeah, sign up, we'd love to have you. It's really fun. It was a ton of fun. It really was, it went so fast and it was great. So great job, guys. Um, next would be Rock for a Reason, but I don't think Meredith Howie is on the line. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I'm going to speak for Meredith. Uh, this is Elena Oyer. Uh, we are working on uh, inquiring to members about uh, donations or upcoming cleanup events. Uh, Meredith is looking into some county uh, cleanup events if folks are interested. My email is in the chat for the Membership Engagement Committee as well as Rock for a Reason. Stay tuned. Um, Meredith Howie, the chairperson for Rock for a Reason, will be posting in the forum. But if you yourself or your organization has a need for donations or volunteer activities as we get into the warmer temperatures, certainly reach out. Thank you. Thanks, Elena. And then attractions with, um, I think Rachel Polino is going to give the update. Yes, um, so the attractions committee is a continuation of our me museums and attractions task force from last year. So I'm um, gonna be reaching out to some folks to make sure that's on your radar and hoping to get a, um, we are still looking for a chair for that committee and hoping to get that going um, in the next month. Okay. And our social media committee chair, Nina Pacini. Hi everyone, Nina Pacini with Letchworth Gateway Villages. I would like to invite anyone who wants to participate to our next meeting, which is next Tuesday um, from 2.30 to 3.30. And we are gonna be talking about Google My Business, which is an essential platform for any local business or attraction here in Rochester. We're gonna be talking all about best practices, how to optimize your search, what kind of photos you need to have on there, how to update it, all that good stuff. So I will drop the Zoom in the chat. We also put that on the um, Facebook forum if you haven't already. All committees should actually be doing that. So um, people get reminded and it's another way just to have that quick link. Thanks, Nina. And our frontline training task force with Danielle Hildreth. Danielle. Hello, hello everybody. I wanted to just share, this is a new committee that um, we've come up with. Hopefully you remember the Rockstar training and we are actually gonna have Rockstar 2.0 e-learning coming out. And as you know, Visit Rochester has been very busy even through this crazy pandemic. And one of the things they continued to do was to develop the training, have it go online. So we are looking for some people to join a committee that will help advise and support the rollout of the program. We expect a soft rollout in the summer with an official rollout in the fall. And we are looking to have people from all sectors. So some people from restaurants, hotels, attractions, and so forth be a part of this committee. We will actually form the committee in May will be our first meeting, but we're looking for people that are interested now, go ahead and sign up through the website. The link's already been put in the chat. Thank you. 
And last but not least, our local contact committee with Justin Cheshire. Hi, everybody. Sorry I missed the meeting today. Um, so we had a great meeting on March 2nd. So we have a really healthy list. We're taking April off. Rich and I are gonna regroup and figure out how we're gonna attack this list. Um, I did get an email already. I'm gonna connect with Wendy on some of the, some of the uh, contacts I was able to add to the list. So I'm excited to, to do that next. But our next meeting is going to be May 4th, 10 a.m. Zoom info is on the Facebook page. I will also add it to the chat here. And if anybody has any questions, or would like to learn more, feel free to reach out to Rich or myself. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all of our chairs for all your hard work. If you're interested in joining a committee, reach out to the chair or to Greg Laduca for more information. Um, for this month's steering committee update, just want a reminder that second quarter sees some openings in steering committee, which includes services, see and do and shop segments. Um, I invite members to nominate themselves, or if you think someone would be really great for your segment, please reach out to Greg, Jess Connolly, or myself. Um, one of the roles of the steering committee is to help plan this meeting. It's once a month. It's a lot of fun, and you know, you kind of have a hand in what we're presenting. Um, and it's awesome people on the group. I'll just say that. Now on to updates from the very hardworking staff at Visit Rochester. Um, Wendy Ford, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everyone. Wendy Ford with the sales department, and I'm very excited to share that Tim, Rich, Libby, Alicia, and Dave have been very busy, and I think that we are all finally feeling hopeful um, because we're finally getting back to doing what we love to do best, um, and that just kind of confirms it with the presentation. So thanks for that great presentation, and I think our hope will continue uh, to continue to move forward. So let's share some of the things that we have been working on. Um, I'm very happy to say that since January, we have hosted four site visits, um, two local site visits, one state. And uh, last week, Tim just completed our first national site visit in a year. So that was awesome to be able to participate in that again. It was for a citywide convention for June of 22, 700 attendees and 880 room nights. Uh, and the biggest plus is it's a new piece of business. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we also were able to secure um, two new sporting events for 2021, which were soccer and softball tournaments that uh, we are working on. Uh, the other thing we were able to secure for uh, booking was just signed for July of 22 for the over 500 room nights, uh, GeeklyCon. If you want to know all about Geekly Clan, then Alicia will be more than happy to share that with you. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share is that our leads are finally picking up. We're happy to see that. Um, for, the, for the first quarter, we'll say since January, we've had a combined convention and sport lead of 73 leads, um, and that continues to grow. So we're very excited about that. Uh, two other things I just want to share with you briefly is uh, earlier this month, we collaborated with Visit Buffalo on a client event where we hosted a uh, New York State meeting planner where we were able to share some information regarding virtual events. And we had over 25 clients, so that was a great touching point for us. And then last week, we hosted an event for our hotel partners with guest speaker Mark Doerr with the New York State Hospitality and Tourism Association. Uh, where Mark shared some legislative reopening and industry updates. So thank you to all of our hotel partners for their support. And that's it. Thanks, Wendy. Um, Amanda Fox, you're next. Thanks, Julie. Uh, a few updates on Amber's and I and first event services. So our summer groups, tournaments, and meetings, um, meetings in smaller capacity numbers, are still planning and moving forward. Um, same with the fall. So we've been very busy working on those. We do have a couple of international groups that are being hosted in Rochester in 22 and 23. So we are servicing those virtually in the next um, this year to kind of prepare a little promotional enticement for those groups. And lastly, we have been very, very busy, as you can all imagine, keeping up with the New York State guidelines and having conversations with clients. Um, so they're prepared to host their events this year in Rochester. Um, if anybody has any questions in regards to events and large gatherings, please feel free to reach out to Amber and I or John Stone at any time. Thanks. Thanks. And Amber Brewer. Hi, everyone. I apologize about my lack of video. I've got my boys home, so it's kind of crazy here. I just wanted to um, put it out there that we are still looking for special offers 
for event attendees or any any kind of offers that you're doing right now, if you could just load those onto the extranet and get in front of everyone that's looking out there. Thank you. And Rachel Polvino, did you have some updates? Yes, thanks, Julie. Hi, everyone. I hope you are well. Um, so kind of similar to what you've been hearing from everyone else, but we are definitely starting to see um, our media coverage and media opportunities starting to pick back up. So thought I'd just share a few highlights from the past month. So you've heard that Rochester was at one point known as America's first boom town. Well, now we are known as Zoo Town. So Rochester has been ranked um, several times, but most recently we came in at number five on the list of top cities for remote workers in the United States uh, by a company called Ownerly. So um, we were cited for you know our affordable, um, low cost of living, all the things there to see and do here, all the local colleges, and also for having um, great broadband connections, great broadband um, options, which is actually very fitting because with this photo of the um, newly renamed Frederick Douglass Greater Rochester International Airport, they did actually have a press conference about a month or so ago with green light, um, uh, you know, fiber internet, and now the airport has green light. So here's your fun fact. The Rochester airport has the fastest internet out of any airport in the country. So that's pretty exciting. So right up there with our Zoom Town USA. And then also as someone referenced earlier, March is Women's History Month, which is a, a great time for um, our partners, especially over at the National Susan B. Anthony Museum and House. As you know, Rochester has a really important role in the, um, the fight for women to have the right to vote. So we've been seeing some coverage coming out of that, specifically um, GMA3, which is the third hour of Good Morning America, featured um, items that you can buy at the Susan B. Anthony gift shop in a segment for Women's History Month. Um, Forbes just did a write-up of um, where you can experience women's history in the country and, and focused uh, on Rochester and the Finger Lakes. And I'm so excited to share that Lonely Planet named the Susan B. Anthony one of the Susan B. Anthony House one of the top ten sites for U.S. women's history in the country. So that was a really exciting placement. So um, it's been nice to see that kind of stuff pick back up. And then we've also been really busy produ producing content for um, VisitRochester.com. Um, being that it was Women's History Month, we uh, created a guide to women-owned businesses in Rochester, highlighting some of um, some of our our local favorites. Um, we also have an uh, update on five things you can do for spring break. Um, and we do have some, some of the specific events and camps that are taking place at the museum. So if there's something that's missing from that list, definitely reach out, we'd be happy to add you. Um, a guide to maple sugaring is up on our website and things to do this March. And then we're, we're um, working fast and furious on getting all of our spring content, everything related to where to see the best flowers and gardens. Um, that is all in the pipeline. I know we got 